All right, hello. Um, I wanted to take a, just a couple of minutes, hopefully, to go over some of the things that I noticed while I was making my Winogradsky columns at my own home um, that I think are important for you to note um, to make sure that this goes smoothly um, and that you have the best experience with this. So uh, the first one is that if you choose a location that has really, really thick mud or has like clay consistency, that if at all possible, if you can get some sand and mix the sand in with it. Um, so if there's any sand in the area that you can kind of mix in, or if you even have some um, like not sterile, but some clean sand at home, like play sand or something in, in a box or something, uh, meaning like a kid's box or something, um, to maybe mix that in a little bit. Make sure that you're mixing in the same amount of sand. Um, either mix a certain amount in the entire thing before you start to separate it out into the columns, um, or make sure that as you're mixing the columns that you put the same amount of sand in each column to make sure that it's the same. So um, I do suggest that, or I suggest um, choosing from a location that has kind of a sandy type of consistency. Um, mine were very, very thick, uh, lots of clay, and after it settled, it really became very compact and solid. So I really recommend that you get something that's a little bit sandy or a little bit more loose dirt. So that's the first one. Um, and also while you're doing that to collect plenty of water from the actual site and the actual location. Um, and then to kind of keep that separate and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, second, uh, for the carbon source, <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of looking into the different kinds of carbon sources um, because I did show in the first video of my setup, I used that paper that I had ripped up. Um, I've looked further into it and the paper does take a little while for it to start to break down and be used by the microorganisms. And I thought it might be interesting if we in our class could um, try to do some different types of carbon sources to see which ones work better. Of course, this isn't going to be um, a perfect experiment because we're all going to be choosing water sources and sediment from different locations. Um, so they would naturally have different microbial growth and, and, and speeds and things like that. Um, however, I think it would be interesting to see the different results that we could get. So. I'm hoping that um, some of you may be able to use oatmeal for your source, maybe even ground up a little bit, just regular oatmeal. Like, um, you know, you could even do like a steel cut versus a, like a, a regular quick oats, um, maybe not instant oats because that's already blanched, um, but like a regular oat. <clears throat> Another example is sawdust. I did mention that in the other video, but if anybody is able to collect some sawdust from some location or, or make some sawdust on purpose, cut something up, um, I think that would be interesting. And I am requesting that we put this online. I'm, I'm opening up a Winogradsky discussion board. Um, so my hope is that when you guys are getting your resources for this, that you can use that. So if you're questioning um, if you should use this jar or not that jar, or if you're questioning like, hey, has anybody experienced this um, that we really talk about on there? Because this is kind of a big project, a big setup, um, and it, it's going to be going throughout the, the rest of the semester. So I think it'll also be fun to kind of post pictures saying like, hey, look at what's going on with mine as it's, as it's working. Um, so I would like you to post what carbon source you're using in the discussion board. So if you're just using the regular newspaper, you can rip that up. I do recommend that you rip it up in very small pieces. Um, so the regular newspaper, put that in there. Um, regular like printer paper that you're not using anymore that you would recycle, you can rip up into small pieces. Um, oatmeal is another option and the sawdust is another option. So I think that those are four. If we can get people to do each of those different four, I think that would be fantastic. So we can see some differences. Um, and then make sure to post that information in the discussion board so other people can indicate what they've done as well so we can kind of see across the board. Um, also make sure that you note that in your observations though. So that's important that you put that in your observations. Um, third, as far as the actual jars and the sediment itself, make sure that you are, once you mix up your sediment, so for example, for the carbon source, um, put your carbon in, mix it up, and then do a pretty good job of measuring out your one cup. Um, this I noticed when I was doing mine, um, I do have different sized, a little bit different sized jars. They're not very different, but a little bit sized. So they did the mud or the sediment kind of sat in different places on the different jars, I think probably from imperfections and measuring as well. Um, I, I did pick out, uh, I noticed in the video, I kind of um, talked about getting the mud and, and things like that, but I did pick out like as much grass and um, roots and sticks and rocks and all of that stuff as possible. Make sure you do that so that you can get an, an accurate measurement. Um, so try to make sure that they're very similar as long as your jars are similar, their containers are similar at the similar location. Now, this is the point that I really want to make though, is that um, 
my Winogradsky columns, they started to have microbial growth as we would expect. And so they were making gases. As they're making gases, what that has done is it has pushed the sediment up in the tube, um, in, the, in the jar. What that has also done is pushed the liquid up and out of the container. So that kind of ended up being a mess. So I also recommend that you put paper towels and maybe even a towel underneath your experiment so that if it does start to seep a little bit, it didn't explode or anything, it just started leaking out the edges, um, that you can notice that and it doesn't ruin anything that you have your uh, column sitting on. So uh, that I kind of combined two of those. Um, so I recommend when you're setting up your columns that you get them to where they're maybe like two thirds full, like a half to two thirds full when you put the sediment in there, okay? Um, and as it's explained in the lab, you wanna put a layer of water on top of that. Now, my big suggestion is that you're going to mix up this kind of milkshake um, mud mix and then measure out and then put that in your container. Let it sit. Let it sit for 30 to 60 minutes. And then if there is not a layer of water on top, then add a little bit of water from the location, okay? Um, I also would recommend that if at that point you get a large amount of water that separates out of say one jar, that what you try to do is make the water um, somewhat equal between the jars. <clears throat> so um, I'm not saying it has to be exact. Um, and in fact, you don't want it to be exact. So if, it, if it's somewhat close, then just leave it alone. My point is, is that as I mentioned, it started to move up and out of the jar. So when one of mine separated out after, you know, a half, or actually it was the next morning I came back and looked, I had a good amount of water in the top of my jar and that's what ended up coming out. Now, if I had only a, a thin layer of water on top of the jar, I don't know that it would have spilled out as much, um, at least on one of the, the columns. So, um, just try to keep that in mind. I say halfway to about two thirds is where you want your sediment to be. And a good, you know, half inch of water um, is a, probably a good amount, depending on the size of your jar. So please keep that in mind. And I do recommend that you put paper towel and towel underneath your location just from the start, um, just because then it's there and you don't have to be lifting these and moving them and things like that when you're letting them sit for the next six to eight weeks or eight weeks plus. All right. Um, so I mentioned the, the water level, <clears throat> then you want to add the water after it settles or maybe pour a little bit out after it settles. Um, be a little bit cautious of that um, when you do that. I do recommend putting the paper towel under, letting it set, settle for 30 to 60 minutes. So once you set up the columns and you have them in your location and they're all labeled, let them sit for 30 to 60 minutes, then you can adjust those water levels if needed. Um, and then take your week zero photos and do your week zero observations. So let them settle a little bit so that you can kind of get an idea of what they really look like on day one, basically. Um, if you have the thick mud, make sure that you add in any sandy sediment. <clears throat> Um, make sure that you post in the discussion board any differences in the, the carbon sources. So if you're using oatmeal or sawdust, for example, put that in there. Um, and then lighting for the photo. So the last two points that I have are regarding the actual photos that you'll need to turn in for week zero. And then you'll also be turning in photos throughout the rest of the eight weeks that you'll be doing this. So um, it won't be every week that you'll be turning in the photos, but you will need photos for every single week as we've been moving forward or as we're moving forward. So the lighting, I am going to post two photos of my Winogradsky columns at week zero. And the first photo will be an example of a bad photo. And that's because what I did was basically I just had the lighting on, the overhead lighting on in my room. <clears throat> it was about four o'clock in the afternoon, which I did note so that I could take my images, take my pictures every week at about four o'clock in the afternoon and make my observations then. Um, so it was about that time I had the light on, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I took a photo. What I noticed in my photo is that the focus was actually on the trees in the background rather than on the actual columns. So what I did then was I kind of messed around with the focus by taking my, my phone and clicking on the screen to focus on that one particular area um, to make it so that the focus was not on the background, which were the trees behind, you know, on the other side of my window, um, but were instead on the actual Winogradsky columns. So what I do every week and what I've done every week is I make sure that when I set my, my camera up and I know exactly where I have all four columns in the same picture, I always touch right above on mine, it's the, the glass area on, above my sulfur um, label actually. So I click on that 
and then it focuses in and I quickly take the picture because then it focuses back out because it wants to focus on other stuff. Uh, that partly is related to the fact that I have glass jars so there's some um, shine on them from the lights. Um, but then it's also because I've got a lot going on in the background and it's going to focus on the trees and things. So please make sure that you make note of this in week zero. So try to get your focusing right. And you'll, you should be able to see in my pictures where even though it's not a bad photo, the first photo, you can really see the difference between what I'm getting um, in the bad photo compared to the good photo where you can actually see the different colors, uh, especially if you zoom in on the photograph. It might not be as apparent uh, from far away, but if you zoom in on the photograph, you can really see the differences in the second photo, whereas in the first photo, it just kind of looks brown. Um, also, in regards to photos, this is not written up in the lab very well, but in regards to the photos, what you will need to have for every single week is one photo of all four of your jars appropriately labeled in the location that they're going to be for the next eight plus weeks. And then what you also need to have are individual photos of each jar. So close up photos of each individual jar with the label visible on the bottom. So I can um, put photos of my photo examples in this lab and you should be able to see how I, again, I use my focus and I click on the actual jar when I'm in the, the photo and it focuses right in on the actual jar contents rather than the shine on the front of my jar. And then that's when I quickly take the picture. And I do that for each of my four containers. So you need to do that every single week. So what is expected at the end of this project is that you will have for eight weeks plus that you will have one image that's all four jars put together, that you will have an image for each individual jar and that those will be focused in such a way to where we can zoom in and we can actually see what's happening in the jars. So you will be graded on that to have all of those things. This first week, don't forget that you need to have a picture of your location as well. Uh, so make sure that you have a picture of your location included in the assignment, which you should have because it's listed in there, but make sure that you have your, your photo of all four, each individual photo, and then a photo of your, lo of your location. Okay, um, make sure that those are all in there. Make sure that you have your observations, which this is all written up in the lab at this point. Make sure you have your observations and then make sure that you do your sketch for week zero. So again, all of the observations and the sketches and the photo all need to be done at least 30 to 60 minutes after you have set up the experiment and let it sit um, so that you get a good kind of starting point. When it's all mixed up, it's not going to be giving you the correct information for your starting point, okay? And it doesn't have to be exactly 60 minutes. You know, if you've got something to do and you come back two hours later, that's okay too, but that will be your starting point, okay? Um, I wouldn't push it too much past that though. Just make sure that you're not starting to get that microbial growth. You wanna have it as pretty close to zero as possible, but after it started to settle, so. All right, so if you have any questions, please feel free to comment. Um, in the discussion board post. I, I really want the comments to be in that specific Winnow Gradsky discussion board post so that we can all comment on each other's comments um, and we can kind of help each other as we're going along because this is really the first time that we're doing this um, since we're all in our own homes using our own materials. Um, I think that this is a great opportunity for us to come together as a class and help each other and kind of compare what we have going on um, <clears throat> as we're working through this. So, all right, if you have any questions, post on the board or email or text me.